Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle and today I am taking you with me and David. He's just not here. I'm filming this intro and outro after, okay? <laughs> we went to the Home Depot and the Lowe's in Manchester, Connecticut. And then we also ran to the Hobby Lobby that was over there because I'd never been in one before and I was curious to see what they had. So, and we were looking for a few specific things that we didn't end up finding, but they did have a lot more than I anticipated in there. So if you want to come with me on my first trip to a Hobby Lobby, then stay tuned <laughs> until the end of this video. It was interesting. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I found something that I did not at all anticipate finding anytime soon. I watched a video recently from, what is it, Plant Life with Ashley, Anita, why can't I ever remember anybody's names? Anyway, she did a video <laughs> tour of the Costa Farms Nursery and I saw this plant there and the guy was like, you'll see these in the stores soon and I was like, sure I will and then boom the next time i went to the store there it is so i hope that you enjoy me finding this plant and then i'm gonna meet you back here and show it to you a little bit closer so and explain how to take care of it because there's like no information on the internet so i gathered as much as i could and i'm going to share that with you in case you guys happen to find one of these in your big box stores soon so Let's roll on into the video. Mm, doubt it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, right? That's a lot of crow. Look, they have Halloween stuff out. What? That's a little too much for me. Like, I'm not ready for that yet. I love Halloween. $14.98. I mean, those are cute. You can see it all says like spicy fall. Yeah, it's just like a lot. That's like a lot. Alright, let's see what they have inside aside from copyright music. I can sing over the music if that helps. Yes, please do. <laughs> It's too loud. Okay fam, even though David's singing was beautiful and that was a lovely song there, I decided to do a voiceover instead. So we are at the Lowe's in Manchester, Connecticut, and I'm just taking a look at some of these cute little planters here from Live Trends. They always have really really adorable stuff the only issue i have is they tend to like glue the air plants into there which is difficult when it comes time to water them so there's that i thought these little planters down here were really cute this one says back to school or back to bed with a little unicorn on it this one has a dog that says but first coffee and then the yellow one back here has a dinosaur on it that says, Dear Bed, I Love You. I think those are really cute, especially like for kids' bedrooms. This Haworthia doesn't need a ton of light, so it actually does make a cute little gift and an easy going plant to give to somebody. I'm always a sucker for this pot down here with the black and gold. I think it's really pretty. I just never find a plant in there that I actually want. So there's that. They've got a bunch of hanging baskets here, some pothos, nothing too excited. I think these are all 1998. Yeah. But lots of golden pothos. I got a kick out of this new tag on it Elegant Accent Air Purifier from Costa Farms. Makes it sound so fancy, like it's not an air purifier, you guys. Anyway, cute little peperomia for 
$1.98. I like these little terracottas from Urban Jungle. I just really enjoy the way that they present their plants. A little spruce there. And then there's just your regular degular assorted foliage from Costa Farms over here. The smaller ones are usually $4.98 and the larger containers are $6.98. So they had some sort of cute stuff over here, a couple of dead begonias, but it's fine. It's like a terrible superhero. My friends call me Dark Mystery. <laughs> so over here we've got some like pretty sad looking floor plants. The Schifflera was looking not so bad. The Diefenbachias were nice. I think those are like either 12 or 13 98 something along those lines. Cute little Peperomia Caparata Shumi Red. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I don't do those. <laughs> and if you have trouble with Peperomias, definitely check that one out. I'm showing you four out of my collection that I think are a little bit easier to care for. If I've managed to keep them alive, I think you can too. So, some cute outdoor baskets of the golden pothos, and then some cute little fiddles here, actually looking halfway decent. A sea of Linda Dawn begonias looking actually pretty good too, surprisingly. This one is stunning, one of my favorite angel wing begonias. It's just got that nice dark leaf and that really beautiful maroon underside. I highly recommend it if you are into cane begonias. I know they can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. I have a love-hate relationship with them. There's a few of them that I love, like the Maculata here. Thankfully, mine doesn't look like this. But I am planning on doing a video soon showing you how I take care of my cane begonias and I need to cut them back and replant a couple of them. So I figured we would do that together while we talk about how to not kill them. I've got more urban jungle over here, some cute philodendron hanging here, hanging, well, it's trailing, you knew what I meant, in this cute terracotta pot from urban jungle for $19.98, you guys, 20 bucks for that, that's a really good deal in a cute pot like that. And then that's really it for this Lowe's, we're gonna head on over to the Home Depot across the street now. What the fuck is that? Yeah, 
That is weird. <laughs> right? It's not in focus. Weird. It's, uh, yeah, it's aggressive. I like it. Alright, let's just skip on ahead to the hanging baskets. That's what we all want. Oh, look. <gasps> no, I wanted this. Magnificum. We have a problem. They have the plant that I wanted. That I just saw them talk about in their video was going to be in stores soon. Ooh. Yeah, it's a caladium, but it's supposed to be Xanthosoma. It's hmm. supposed to be easier to care for than other caladiums. Can you hold it? It's, it's the only one. I'm just gonna see if they have any other ones. It caught my eye when I saw it in the video. I was like, ooh, that's pretty because it looks like the zebra plant, but it yeah, has it more of like an alocasia vibe to like because right. it has the, the ears or the lobes. Yeah, nice ears. It's not in the best shape ever, but um, I don't know if I'll find another one. Yeah. And now that I said that, I'll probably find a bunch. Okay, now that we found the exciting plant and David is holding it safely for us, we can look at what else is going on here. They had some nice polyboitras, the peperomia actually looking halfway decent. They must have gotten a stock recently because I'm surprised that I even found that caladium. I'm like obsessed with it. I'm like, wait, bring it back so I can look at it some more. Yes, so pretty. I can't handle it. Anyway, yeah, they must have just gotten a shipment pretty recently for this plant to even still be there and for some of those other ones to be looking in somewhat decent shape. So I'm just checking out the hanging baskets now to see if they have anything else exciting hiding in here. So far, it's just looking like some regular foliage like this philodendron from Costa Farms think that these are 1998 in that size hanging basket some ivy there was that cute peperomia cupid and then this syngonium i think this is the maria in this wretched colored hanging basket i i still can't understand who thought that was a good idea but i thought this plant was kind of cool for 698 it's called dragon's tongue I don't know if I've ever seen it before. It's probably something I would kill, so we're not gonna buy it, but still thought it looked pretty cool. These blue star ferns are really pretty. Just not so much in this basket. I don't I don't know who thought this basket was a good idea. Like, who actually likes that color? Like, does that really go with anybody's decor? I don't know. Down here I was excited and then immediately disappointed to find this dying Hoya Lacunosa. I have one of these, but mine did not look this bad when I got it. Like these leaves are just, they're gone. Like they're not, they're not coming back. As soon as you touch them, you can tell that it is just not a viable plant. They're beyond saving unfortunately at this point in time if you were to buy that plant and bring it home it would just be like a major disappointment they had a couple but they were all in the same rough shape unfortunately I see that a lot with this hoya i think they tend to get overwatered when they're in the big box stores and that's just really sad honestly but can't go wrong with the diefenbachia apparently these things always look good so I'm assuming that they're probably hard to kill. They are toxic, like super toxic. So we don't do that. I'm still staring at this plant. <laughs> and over here we have a wild David complaining 
about them dying, the cacti, in his natural habitat. I don't know why I thought that was funny. Anyway, here's a Syngonium Strawberry Splash. I'm in rare form today, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is weird. This might be the weirdest voiceover we've ever done. Anyway, some cute little begonias over there, and then really, that's, that's pretty much it. We do, however, always like to check out the cacti and succulents and look for anything strange and unusual, like the euphorbia that David found that looks like it has, like, these purpley maroon colored spikes coming out of it, which is actually pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. I thought these ones here were really pretty too. I'm just not really in the market to be getting anything right now unless it's a plant that excites me or something that's on my wish list. This is the Euphorbia corn cob, corn cob Euphorbia. I don't know the botanical name, but I have a little baby one of that and it's super cute. I didn't know it grew so weird like that, but it's okay. We're still gonna love it anyway. Okay fam, I think that's enough weird for one video. I'm just checking out some of the outdoor stuff. I thought this plant was really pretty, but I couldn't find the name of it. And yeah, I'm just taking a look at some of what they have going on out here. Some sad sunflowers. And then they had the caladiums to my left here that are the ones that I normally kill. So let's hope that I don't kill the one that I just got. I thought that this variegated one was really pretty though. Anyway, we're gonna head on over to Hobby Lobby now and then that's it. Could be you could put air plants. Yeah, these are cute though. I do like this. Seven ninety nine. Dream like a bohemian. Work like a boss. That's cute. I like that one. I see baskets. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Okay, that says gather, but at first I saw it really quick and I thought it said catheter, and I'm like, well, that's a really <laughs> weird thing to put on a hand towel. Am I in a tray? Okay, yes. <laughs> Can we get lame shit like this one day? I mean, do you want this one? Yes. Because it's not lame at all. I do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> My mom would like this. Oh, look, and it says on the other side, I love that you're my mom. I feel like I have to get that for her. I didn't get her anything for her birthday. It's Jesus-y and it says, I love you, mom. It's like her fav her two favorite things. Yeah, okay. Ooh, cozy, comfy cuddle coffee. Yeah, that's so little though. Yeah. This is a good size for her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this just says, so loved. Do you have a special place in my heart? No, she'll like this. We'll make her happy. These pictures are cute too. It reminds me of, um, not literally because it has a birdcage, but it reminds you of the movie Birdcage. <laughs> Kindness always. Cute, it's the shoes. Wow, this is overwhelming. Look at all the fun rustic farmhouse stuff. Yeah. No. But I'm always looking for things. <laughs> I'm always looking for things that can be repurposed for plants. Yeah. For big plants. For lots of plants. See these make cute little terrariums. There's always stuff that you can use for plants that's not in Tennessee. Like, they even would look just like cute in there, even though it wouldn't up the humidity. It just adds a little decor. Cute. That's cool. 
Oh, make a cute plant stand too. $50 though? Like, who are they kidding? What is this, Michaels? I thought they were supposed to be cheaper. Oh, these are cute. Just little shelves and stuff. I like that one. It's too symmetrical though. Bothers me. That's a cute little lamp. I have a globe in my room. I like the little the little stools with the tassels. Those throw pillows are cute as hell. This is what I mean by like introducing texture yeah. into the space. No, that is terrible. <laughs> okay, fam. So I hope that you enjoyed that. There was a lot going on and then also not a lot going on at the same time. But the Manchester Home Depot is super hit or miss. Like that is where I found my Silta Picana about like six or seven months ago, I want to say, if not longer than that. And I always have my fingers crossed when I go in there. They most of the time have something sort of okay. They had a bunch of Lacunosas like this one that I have here, the Royal Flush, and they just weren't doing well, like at all. Like I showed you, there was no viable plant matter. Like these are thin leaves, but they should still be like sort of stiff. And those were not, they were just squishy. That's unfortunate, but if you can find one of these that is in decent enough shape, I definitely recommend it because I've had this one for a while now and I rescued it from, I think my local Home Depot over here, if I'm not mistaken. I do have that video somewhere up on my channel. I can link it for you guys if you wanna watch it. But, it'll be over here but that was sad it does get really cute and like splashy though so I definitely recommend it and it's a really easy bloomer I had this one peduncle out on me a couple of times so highly recommend grabbing that one if you can find it even if it's not in the best shape as long as it's viable you can rescue it that one did not look like that when I got it <laughs> so on to the main event this is my caladium xanth xanthosoma lindenii magnifico it's called the magnificum for short and um it's safe to say that i'm kind of obsessed with this and i know you guys i've had caladiums before they are not easy care plants at all but the Costa Farms guy said that this one is supposed to be easier to care for than other caladiums. I don't know how true that is. I want to believe that they wouldn't put these out on the market just a few months before they're due to like die back for the winter. I don't know. This is my Xanthosoma and I was really attracted to it because it reminds me of the zebra plant with this really beautiful contrasting veining, but I'm a sucker for these lobes. It has like a alocasia philodendron vibe without being either one of those so i'm into it as this plant matures the lobes will continue to get bigger the way that certain philodendrons do i can't even like this plant is beautiful i wanted to show you too if you could see the petioles have this like orange like hair like stuff on it which is also something that I feel like philodendrons tend to have certain types of philodendrons so I don't know man it's like a philodendron but it's a caladium and <laughs> I had a caladium a really long time ago it was one of my first house plants because I just thought it was really pretty in the store and I didn't really know what it was so it died back in the winter and I was like what the hell and then I read that you could keep the bulb in the soil as long as you kept it in a, a dry dark place and that it would come back in the springtime but it never came back so what I've gathered with this plant is that you can indeed do that if you wanted to tuck it away in a cupboard somewhere I know people put them in like their kitchen cabinets 
and stuff. I found a plant in like an old lady's kitchen cabinet one time and I, I took it out and now I have it outside. <laughs> but um, I couldn't understand why it was in there. Now I'm thinking that maybe she was just overwintering the plant. So that is what it's called overwintering. So you're literally just making sure that the bulb doesn't die over winter. Do you feel me? It's natural for this plant to start dying back as the weather gets cooler. It likes warm temperatures and humidity. I'm thinking this is probably going to live in the greenhouse. It is prone to thrips and mealybugs and other pests, so if you haven't been paying attention. We've got a bit of a thrip issue going on in here that we are managing every day. I do have an update on that coming for you guys soon, but I am not introducing any new plants into this space because there are no thrips that I can see elsewhere, thankfully. So we are just being careful. Like even right now, I'm like watching to see if there's any flying around, but honestly, I have not seen very many adults. I bought like blue sticky traps and I have not seen very many, mostly fungus gnats, which are also becoming less and less frequent because <laughs> mosquito bits, girl, mosquito bits, I'm murdering all them gnats. So yeah, this is my Xanthosoma. She's got a new leaf coming in here and another new leaf coming in down here. So there's two plants in here and it's beautiful. You could see the immature leaf compared to arguably the most mature leaf here. This was the last one in the store. So I'm really determined not to kill it. So this time around, I'm thinking that I will dig up the bul bulbs. Oh, it looks like some webbing down there. Oh no, that's an actual spider. There's an actual spider on the plant. Oddly enough, I'm okay with that. It's going to eat the rest of the pests as long as it doesn't start climbing on me. We're good, boo. We're good. I'm like, wait, there's webbing. Tell me there's not spider mites. But that is too big to be a spider mite. That's like a legit spider. Anyway, I'm so glad I've been cradling it close to my body. I don't have the heebie-jeebies now. It's fine. Anyway, so I think that I'm going to dig up the bulbs, put them in a paper bag, into a cool, dark place so they don't rot. The key is to make sure that they're dry and I guess not in the sun. So I think that's maybe what I did wrong is I just didn't put it away somewhere to store it. I just kind of left it out with the rest of my plants and pots. So we're going to find out what happens. <laughs> if you guys have any tips for this plant, definitely leave them in the comments below. I would love to know if you have found one of these or if you've had success with any type of caladium. This one is super rare. I can't find any information really about this on the internet. Like I said, it just likes warm, humid environments, bright and direct light. This can handle a little bit more light than other caladiums because the leaves aren't quite as translucent as other caladiums so we're just hoping that this one's easy it likes to be moist but not wet of course like bright and direct light keep it moist but not wet like the most confusing care instructions ever but it's kind of just one of those things that you have to learn as you go so i hope that that helps if you guys do manage to come across one of these don't be afraid to purchase it i mean it's only 20 bucks from costa farms i have a feeling maybe we'll be seeing more of them come springtime it seems kind of silly for them to be releasing them now like i said if they're gonna be dying back for the winter which i know we don't want to talk about it but it's coming like sooner than we think so yeah, I hope I'm not leaving anything out. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. I do have some stuff up in my Etsy shop right now. It's not a lot. It's not as much as I anticipated. 
I opened up my prop boxes and had a look at some of the things that were growing and decided that I really preferred to give them a little bit more time to grow before sending them to new homes. So some stuff that I have up there now is just stuff that was ready to go and definitely give my shop a favorite so that you know when I'm going to be introducing more things. I've got lots of rare Hoya growing that hopefully will be ready to snip snip soon and I'm hoping, wow that's a big bee, I am hoping that by next spring that we will be selling mostly rare Hoyas in the shop. Obviously I'll have lots of other plants going on in here but your girl really likes to grow and sell Hoyas so definitely anticipate things going in that direction hopefully soon. There's other ways that you could support this channel too. There's lots of links that you could shop through, some cute t-shirts, pots, lots of different things for your plants, soil. Check out the affiliate links that I have in there. I get a little bit of commission when you do that, so I appreciate it. Plus you get some cute planty stuff in return. I also have Venmo and PayPal links down there if you want to just throw me five bucks to get a cup of coffee or I don't drink coffee, I don't know why I say that. I like tea. I like chai lattes from Starbucks. So if you want to buy me one because this is exhausting and I'm starting a new semester in like two weeks. I'm going to try my best to not let that impact how often I'm uploading but I can't make any promises so yeah I'm gonna go now thank you so much for your support if you guys made it to the end of this video leave me a zebra emoji because I know this isn't a zebra plant but it still looks like one so I appreciate you fam and I'll see you in the next one bye